Hey everyone, this is Andy from Giz China, and today we've got a really, really special hands on. This is the LaTV S1 Android smartphone. It's LaTV's most affordable phone. It costs 1,499 RMB, which is around $242. But looking at the presentation of the packaging, the phone itself, and the build quality, you would not think it was a budget smartphone, a mid range smartphone, sorry. Let's take a look inside the box. So when you open your box, you have your Letty V S1 here. There will be a cover across the screen. And also, when you get it out of the box for the first time, there's this case connected to it too. It's a bit fiddly to take off, so I removed it ahead of the video. Before we look at the phone itself, let's see what else is inside the box. So underneath the phone, you've got this little envelope here, and that has your SIM ejector tool and a warranty card and other things. And you know, like the presentation is just amazing. You just pull that out and your instruction manual pops out the other side. Just, you know, there's no reason why LaTV have done this other than it just looks fantastic. You know, it's really, really classy and smart. Underneath here we have the uh, China standard charger here and we also have a USB Type-C data cable. Again, presentation is top notch. All wrapped up nice and neat in a little case. Looks really neat, really nice, and again, you would not think this was a 1,499 RMB phone. Okay, onto the phone itself. Specifications of the LaTV S1 are really, really great. 5.5 inch, 1920 by 1080 sharp display, and it looks really, really good. We've got a 5 megapixel camera with 90 degree wide angle lens on there. Capacitive buttons along the chin. That's glass all across the front, wraps around, and it meets this really well-made CNC, beautifully crafted CNC metal chassis. You can see it runs around the phone there. It's quite thick. It looks a little bit like the Xiaomi Mi4 chassis, quite thick with a nice polished bezel edge to it. Looks really, really nice, and it feels fantastic in your hand. On the right-hand side, we have a power button, and we have this SIM tray, which is for dual SIM. The top we have an infrared black, uh, sensor for remote control of TVs, air conditioners and everything. 3.5mm headphone jack there too. On the left hand side we have a switch which is for the turning the phone into a silent mode. Volume rocker. And in the base we got dual speakers and that USB Type-C. This is actually the first USB Type-C phone we've seen. And again, a really neat feature for a 1500 RMB phone. On the rear we've got a dual LED flash on there. The TV logo and a 13 megapixel Sony IMX214 uh, rear sensor with an f2.0 aperture. So just the build quality and those specs alone would warrant the 1499 price tag. But then the specs get even better. Inside we've got 3 gigabytes of RAM. We've got a MediaTek Helio X10 64-bit processor too. There's no SD card support on this phone. Um, I think internal memory on this one is 16 megabyte, uh, 16 gigabytes, sorry, and there's a 3000 mAh battery in there too. So specifications really are great, build quality is amazing, and it just looks stunning in your hand. You can see from the 5.5 inch display that there is a black bezel around the phone. So although it looks like a bezel-less device, you can see there's a bit of a border around the base and the sides, but it doesn't detract from the looks. It just looks really, really stunning. To unlock the phone, you simply swipe it up. There's no fingerprint scanner on this phone, but that's fine for this kind of money. The screen, as you can see, looks really, really great. Great viewing angles. Looks really, really nice. And this is LaTV's own UI based on Android. They've set things up a little bit differently to other Android systems. For example, if we swipe down, we can swipe down from anywhere on the screen. This will bring up notifications, but it doesn't bring up a quick settings. Uh, option. You can go into the full settings package here, you can go into all your settings, but you can't just get at your quick settings from the notification. Usually you can swipe down and swipe down again and you'll have a quick settings. Instead, LaTV have set that up here, you just hit this options button on the home screen and you'll get into your app management area, your uh, screen brightness control, music player. You've got some toggles up here and also here too, you can turn your Wi-Fi on and off. And also you can either clear apps one by one or all together by hitting that button. Go out of that. Okay, another function we have from the capacitive buttons along the bottom are the voice 
system. It's a little bit like Siri. It only understands Chinese, so there'll be no use for uh, Ch English speakers. But, I mean, unless you can speak Chinese, obviously. But uh, as it is, there isn't much use outside of China. All right, what else have we got in here? If we go into the settings, you can see that the settings here in English, really, really neat, clean and easy to understand. And you can see just how smooth it is scrolling through this. Uh, you know, the, this I've not played around with it too much, but this system really does feel very well optimized. It feels absolutely beautiful. Swipe up from on the screen, you get this search bar. Swipe down again, it disappears. One thing missing from this phone, there's no app drawer. There's also no uh, Google Play services install as a standard, but I'm hopefully I can use the same trick that we can use on Xiaomi devices to install Google services, and I'll try that very, very soon. You can see that Lativi have installed a few of their own systems and features in here. You can play video from here, and from this home button here, this will take us directly into the Lativi Live, which will show videos playing live, and we can watch those stream those over 4G or Wi-Fi. So yeah, overall it looks really, really stunning. Um, there's already a system update available for this phone. It needs updating and you can see just how clean and neat this UI is. And I'm really impressed by the fact that although this is a phone designed for the Chinese market, the English in the system is quite easy to understand. There are no silly uh, translation errors or anything like that. It's a really, really polished phone. Now, before I got my hands on the LaTV S1, or any LaTV phone, I did comment on how similar the LaTV is to a Meizu in design. And if I just bring, for example, the Meizu MX4 in, sorry, that's the note, bring the MX4 in, and you can see that they've got the same overall shape. You know, that they do look a little bit similar to each other, but when you get them in your hands, the Pro, MX4 Pro, yeah, there is the quality of the S1 is way above this. Now the Pro is Meizu's flagship device, the S1 is Lativi's cheapest device, and the S1 has so much better quality, it's just amazing. I just hope that the, the performance of the phone, the camera, and the system and everything around it works just as well as it looks and feels, because seriously, with only a short time with this phone, I can easily see this being my go-to phone from now on. It really is a beautiful device. Another comparison, if we just bring in the Meizu M1 Note, obviously the M1 Note is a little bit cheaper than the LaTV, but again, you can see there's a huge difference in quality, but design-wise they're quite similar to each other. Anyway, so that's the LaTV S1. It's a really smart looking phone. It's very beautiful and it's very affordable. If you can pick one of these up, for you know, for even a little bit more than the the two hundred and forty two dollar U.S. sorry the Chinese asking price, I would say you know maybe go for it. Wait for our full review to make sure there's no weird bugs and no issues with it. But uh, from this you know from this first impressions, I'm really blown away by this phone. It's a killer device, and I can't wait to use it. Okay, if you've got any questions, please feel free to ask me on Giz China, and I'll answer them as quickly as I can. Thanks for your time. Goodbye.